Hello and welcome to another edition of Sadler's TV. We're in the unfamiliar surroundings of the home dressing room here at the Banksy Stadium and I've got two very special guests alongside me. Former English lightweight champion at Martin Gethin and uh, the club's new commercial manager, Wayne Thomas, former footballer of course as well. Um, Martin, if I could come to you first, let's talk football first and foremost. You're a Warsaw fan, how long have you been coming down to watch the Sadler's? Um, since I can remember really. Um, my dad was bringing me here when I was little. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I've come to many of the games, like, but that's because he, he did work nights all the time, basically. Mm. So he just, whether he'd have a time off to bring me or what, well, I don't see. But, yeah. And then you picked it up since you've got older. I've just, yeah, he's got older, I can call myself now, can't I? <laughs> Big boy. <laughs> uh, good time to watch us at the moment. What have you made of, uh, of this season? It's been so good so far. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's exciting, really. Mm. I'm just hoping they can get automatic promotion because when he, you know, not to say the ones, mm. you know, um, Again, through on the playoffs, but it's a bit easier, isn't it? Yeah. Getting all smacked from last year. So I'm just hoping we can get through then. You know, at this point, halfway through the, uh, the season, like I thought, maybe we'll take it a little bit deep, but it's, it's, getting, it's getting better. <laughs> it's getting... From a supporter point of view, is there a general feeling that we can go and get promotion? <coughs> you know, you sit in the stands and talk to fellow supporters. What's the general mood out there when you're watching us? They're all on that, still that same. Still not sure, what's, what's They're still watching too yeah, long to be yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, cause that one when they played uh, Burry. Yeah. There's up three, and I was thinking, yeah, this is good. <laughs> this is just smashing them here. And all of a sudden, they scored two back versus one minute after each other. And I thought, no, I don't get a draw out of this kid. That, you know, they just kept it through to the end. Then. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a bit about your boxing career. Major debut in 2004. I've got here. How proud are you of what you've achieved so far in your career? Really, really impressed, really, because <clears throat> to be honest, when I first started, I thought I'd have ended up a journeyman, lot like, really. That's that's truly well thought. In 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 training and all that sort of stuff, I never wanted to go in that ring being unfit. Mm. So each time I was training, I was training harder and harder and harder, and I was winning. Like my first fight, I box. Every Muslim says the best journeyman around is that Christian Leiter. I stopped him in the third round, I think it was. Mm. Um, and then it went off from then. I was just constantly winning and winning and winning and winning. Let's talk about one of those titles, the high point, the English in 2008. Talk us through the, the preparations for the fight, how the fight went itself and, and the aftermath. The, what, the British title? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the British title. Because um, <clears throat> going back a bit just in the career lock, mm. before that, um, I was, I was undefeated in 17 fights. Um, I beat two un unbeaten prospects who were supposed to be the next British champion and maybe reach the world level and that. Mm -hmm. um, and I stopped them in four and seven rounds. And like from then on, I was thinking after this, I, you know, I was just dying for this British title fight. And mm -hmm. 17 and now, I thought he'd have been there the next yeah. fight. But the lock in China and all he was saying, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll get it now, you'll get it next fight. I didn't get it. So mm -hmm. then I went through a bad run. Mm -hmm. We had to have an operation on my back and all that. Like, come back off them three losses. Um, I won the English title back, then I went for the IBF, won the IBF, and then obviously then I got the, there's no reason not to get for the British title then. Mm -hmm. got, put you through for the British title, won the British title, and then that was it, that was, one of, that was the main thing I wanted to win. Mm. And the training for all that, um, he was at um, a chap, you know, like he, he trained at his, his house, it was, he'd go swim pool under his, his house and that like. And he was just, he was just blasting us under there, um, swimming mm. as hard as what you can. Pads, jacuzzi, the jacuzzi and everything as well. It was, it was, it was not was, bad. Just not saying it's hard, that trip, yeah. is it? <laughs> <laughs> he pulled the jacuzzi. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and Dan Mal got to see him with the village and everything then as well, so. Fantastic. Um, I mean, another high point, it got, it's got to be the pinnacle of most, most fighters' careers, to fight at the MGM in, in Las Vegas. Um, yeah. Fabian Luque, the, the opponent, that's got to be something that will live with you for the rest yeah, of your life. Yeah, it was, yeah, because he was, he's won, um, I, I think it was literally, I hadn't not gone back from training, and he, he found me up, he says, um, he says, yeah, I got your fights at the MGM in Las Vegas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. It's now seriously, yeah, yeah. He's, you're on the day before Rick Hassenbox Floyd Mayweather. No way. I thought, no way. <laughs> are you being serious? <laughs> yeah, yeah, honest. We fly out the week before. Fly out the week before. He's training all these 
these well known gyms at Oscar De La Hoya mm. and Pacquiao and all them was bo- a spot of training. And then uh, come the day, the uh, thing was the opponent changed three times before I got over there as well. Right. So I didn't even know he was going to box when I got over there. Yeah. Got over there, I had to put on weight as well. Because right. the chap I was fighting, he had to, he come in. Right. He come in a bit over. And he was, he was 21, he won 21. Stopped 18 or something, was he? Lower. So he's yeah, lower. So yeah, somewhere around that anyway. Yeah. And I was thinking, no way, I'm not coming to move. Wade in, and he was, uh, he was heavier than me again. Anyway, when we got there, so even though I was still lighter. Still not gonna... But like, I think, no, he'll be all right, you'll be all right. Anyway, I got in there and I stopped him in the fourth round, so. It turned out good. <laughs> Surely the nerves must kick in a little bit more than they used to when you're standing in that sort of arena, knowing the history, the prestige that surrounds the MGM. Even yeah, as, a, yeah. as a seasoned boxer as yourself, do your nerves start ticking over a little bit more than they used to? Yeah, yeah, there was. I didn't, I didn't let them take over too much. Because mm. um, the time I did that was when I was boxing as an amateur at the um, ABI finals. Right. And it was down in London. All these world champions and all them was there. And the ref come in, he says, right, you got um, any of this, any of that, you throw it out. Like, no way. My first big thing, mm-hmm. and I've thrown virtually nothing in the fight, and I lost the fight by about four or four points. Or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then when I was in Vegas, I was thinking, <coughs> I'm not going to let take over, I'm just going to focus on the fight. And I did go in there now. Took him out. <laughs> well, if I could bring you in, you also enjoyed a, a professional sporting career. Now back at the club as a as a commercial manager, how have you found being back in the uh, the corridors at the banks? Is in a, a bit of a different role than you used to. Yeah, I don't think my career sent as glamorous <laughs> as that towards the uh, MGM ground <laughs> and, and uh, Oscar De La Hoya's uh, uh, gyms and stuff. But it, it's you know it was really exciting. It was quite surreal to be honest with you. I mean. There's people like, I've just had a meeting with Roy Wally, mm. um, Tom Bradley's still here in a capacity, and, and lots of things have stayed the same in a good way. I mean, obviously the club's developed massively, but no, to, to come full circle in, I think it's about 18 years from when I originally joined the, the club as a 15-year-old, it, it, it's been a great opportunity. I'm, I'm delighted to be back. Mm. As a professional footballer, then, how much did you enjoy your time as a as a pro? 38 league appearances I've got here between 96 and I'm 2000. I'm sure there's more than that. <laughs> it doesn't sound... You know, I, I think you, you, a lot of people, if you speak to, whether it be Martin, I mean, he's still doing his boxing, so it's probably a little bit different, but you probably don't appreciate it at the time. Mm. I joined this club as a 15-year-old um, and obviously built through the youth team system under Eric McManus. Um, got my uh, professional contract here and made my debut with Chris Nicholl. You know, I look back in what seems to me with the fans and the club quite a, um, a favourable time for the club, whether it be the characters in and around the club and the, the type of football we play. But obviously when you're an 18-year-old, it, 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 you don't appreciate it, you're in the moment. Um, but obviously I look back on it now, I'm like, I obviously played um, quite a few games in my first year. Chris Nicholl, I think, was someone who believed in me. Mm. Um, I, I obviously um, got in the team at a good time. I mean, Skip was still here there, Martin right. O'Connor. I think I made my debut alongside. So there's not much better person right. in centre midfield. Marsh is in the team. Wackers in the team. The characters Diff- there. Yeah, of course there is. And that, that was good and bad point to go <laughs> in at that time. But... Uh, <laughs> Then obviously things changed. My second year, uh, Jan Sorensen took over, and I look back in hindsight now. I think myself as a young lad, um, y- you need to sort of manage yourself a little bit better. If I'm totally honest with you, and then obviously I think Saray, they call him now, don't mm. they? Come in, and that's one of the big things for the the club. I'm I'm proud now when I look back on it that I was part of obviously that championship winning team the first time. But no, I don't think you appreciate um, being a professional footballer till it's gone uh, and obviously uh, I left here to go to, to Shrewsbury but I look back on my time here very favourable sat where we are now um, brings back a lot of memories mm. Does that make it even more difficult than returning being around football again do you ever get the itch the bug back feel like you should bring your boots and your car boot just in case no you know you know, I would if they let me in the, in the ex-player games Marshall used to say I'm one of the busy ones I'd want to warm up and I, that's probably a regret thing to be honest those guys have had 500 games so they're fine but um, no it, I think for a lot of people with football it gives you that involvement doesn't it 
like in the role I'm going to do now, it all still comes back to the club mm. and to football. And that's something that myself, a lot of the commercial partners, the fans, Martin, everyone's passionate about that. So now I realise now that I'm at a certain age and I get my football kicks through being involved in the club, my boys who play football. So, But, but like you say, you see the youth team lads go out every yeah. day. Um, you, you don't want to be that... You want to feel like you put your arm around them and say, look, savour it, mm. do everything you can. But no, I'm just glad to be back in that football environment. We'll talk about life after your, uh, after your career in, uh, in a few moments' time. We're just going to take a short break here on Sadler's TV. Do you want to in a few moments for the second half of the trip? Welcome back to Sadler's TV. Martin Geffen and Wayne Thomas, my guests for today's show. We're in the uh, home dressing rooms at the Banksy Stadium. Um, Martin, if I could come back to you for the second half of the show. Um, we were talking just during the break about life after sport, once you have to hang your, your gloves or your, your boots up. Do you start planning already now, still in, in sport as a sportsman, as a, as a senior sportsman, as to what you're going to do once you can't quite get in the ring anymore? I ain't asked for those right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, no planning, right no, no. no. I don't plan nothing. <laughs> Seriously. No, yeah, um, there's, there's, there's lads. I mean, like, obviously, when boxing's finished, um, I'm, sort of, I'm doing personal training now, anyway. Um, and that'll carry on for a bit, so that'll go on for another how many years before it starts fighting ways. People, most people don't want to train with someone who's, like, 40, 50 there, so... Mm. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that'll be that'll be the follow on after boxing for now. Anyway, the boxing and the boxing gym itself as well. No sign of you slowing yet though. Next fight, nineteenth of March at the yeah. Town Hall. How much are you looking forward to getting in there again? I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, it's my last fight was in May against you know Tommy Core. Um, you know, it's that was. Uh, that was supposed to be an easy fight for him, but it wasn't. So. Right. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so and. I've realised from that fight how, how much control that fight, you know, still lies back, mm -hmm. left, but left a minute to go. So I'm sitting there watching you and Tommy Core fight, second round on, he's sparks called, I'm screaming at the telly thinking you're in. Fifth round then you have to retire because of a damaged ear jump. We were yeah. talking about injuries for a little bit in the second half of the show, how frustrating it must be for you, because it is for everyone at home, but for you being in there, Feeling that you're on top, I know you think it maybe should have yeah. been stopped in the second anyway. Yeah. To then have to retire from the fight, how disappointing is that? Biggest disappointment ever, really, because mm. with him, you know, he's, an, he's, an, he's a nice lad, but mm. I wouldn't have raced him as they were, most people, a lot of people mm. do. Um, but he's, you know, he, he does try and he gets up and he'll carry on fighting, he'll carry on fighting until mm. his arms fall off, you yeah. know. But, um, <clears throat> From that knockdown, if it was your way around, and after a fact the ref would have jumped, just stopped him because mm. he, he was like, he was, he was stumbling out his arms up, he's saying, Yeah, I'm alright, as if like he, someone had just come off a night on the, on the yeah, last yeah, one. Yeah. That's how he looked when I knocked out, obviously. Well, like, yeah, getting into the fifth round, like, I, I don't like sharp pain of anything mm -hmm. in fights. That's the least thing you should do, like, you should sharp pain in the fights. And I'll never do that, even even though how much that pain that was hurting me. Yeah. I wouldn't have pulled out if if I wasn't in pain, mm. you know. And um, <clears throat> and like after on the way back, um, I was was a bit upset having to pull out at the fifth round, even though the fight I was basically winning the fight season from then on. Um, and on the way back, I was you know I was a bit hungry after the after the fight and whatever. So I having something to eat, and I couldn't even eat half a sandwich. No, because the pain was just shooting into me uh, um, and then as you know lights on down I went in for the operation and it was because I had a, a, grom, a little grommet still left in my eardrum which kept on popping my eardrum each time right. and that's what the, the uh, doctor and that whatever told me mm -hmm. saying that you had um, a grommet left in your ear. Fixed now? Ready to go again? Ready to go again. Being all reinforced, it, the grommets out and I'm ready. Fantastic. I want to touch on your amateur stuff as well that you're involved in, an amateur show down here, your second amateur show that you're putting on as well. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, the, it's our second amateur show. We had our first one at the Live Club in Rushall. Um, we've got a, a lot bigger, mm. a lot bigger now. The, the big Warsaw Football Club. Yeah. Um, Big dinner show, um, and I can't wait. The kids are excited about it. Um, uh, um, a nice venue and everything as well. 
Mars, I don't think Mars boxing clubs will do it for their second show. Mm. Never first one, their first second show, and the um, it's a big it's a big place of yes as well. So it's funny you say that. People turn up and think that these events just get put on, but there's a lot of stress that goes involved behind yeah, the scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's from me, me wife though. <laughs> she she does all the stress, but she's good at it though, really. <laughs> she she's well, she's she's on on the button. She's she'll. Uh, she phones up all these around these places. She'll get anything for free as well, just free sponsorship. Like so, yeah. they're getting the good sponsorship off you. Um, they're getting the book and all that sort of stuff. So if anyone's anyone's looking for sponsorship for the show, they can have all the names in the what's it um, in the program mm -hmm. on the posters, you know, and the cards put around as well. So we, you know, you get good advertisement. They'll say it out some nights, mm -hmm. um, and they'll be. They'll be sponsoring the actual, some of the, the bouts as well, so they're now being out. Uh, so and so sponsors this bout. Yeah. Um, you make a good commercial, mate. I was just going to say, he's uh, <laughs> trying to switch places. I'm not sure I can box, but uh, <laughs> he's subtly, very subtly dropped that yeah, there. Yeah, <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> uh, Wayne, we spoke about Martin's injury trouble, but you yourself had to retire for injury. I mean, it has got to be the most frustrating aspect of being a professional when you have to give up something you love doing because of injury. Yeah, I, th I think the most frustrating part of it is it's obviously out of your control, fundamentally. And I was very lucky growing up playing football, if I look back, apart from probably breaking a wrist. And I think I did my ankle once, but I was lucky with injury. Mm -hmm. Looked through youth team, I don't think I was injured, pro. And then I ended up obviously in a short space of time. I ended up having four knee operations, and I think just under 18 months, and ruptured an ankle. So... I'd been released from Shrewsbury to provisionally have another contract at Macclesfield, but the knee just kept breaking down. Um, and ultimately, at that point, I think it was at 22, four knee operations in 18 months. Not many people were going to say take a chance yeah. on me. So uh, I ultimately retired from professional football and tried to make my way back in at non-league at Hensford. Did well, did well for a while. Um, but just kept breaking down through injury. I realised at that point I needed to try and forge a different mm. career, unfortunately. Um, so that's what I did. How easy or difficult is that? Because we were discussing again during the break, when sportsmen do have to retire, where do they go? Sometimes they're out in the cold. So how, how difficult or how challenging was it for you to decide this is where you're going to go and to pursue a different career path? You know, at first it was really difficult. I think you don't realise till you look back. Um, and I'm sure it's a lot harder for pros that have had a lot longer career than me and, mm. and, and more games. You've got to look at it. I was only involved sort of three or four years, but especially as a young lad, you're a professional footballer. You think you're going to be a footballer mm. until you're 35, then all of a sudden 21, 22. I know people say it, but you, you're in the real world. You're looking to build a career elsewhere. So, yeah, in that first initial period, even though there's a lot of support through football, some of the senior pros were very supportive. I mean, in terms of my injury, Tony Daly, who had been at the club for a little bit, was massively supportive to me mm -hmm. in helping me sort of get on the right track. Um, it, it is difficult, but I look, I look back on it now, and I think if you haven't done the planning, I'm glad that I had to forge another career at 22, not 32 yeah. or 35, 36. Um, and I had a, a, a certain degree of success now with, with the career that I went into but I'm not going to lie if you just said to me sit here now and have been a pro footballer till I was 35 mm. rather than going to a different career at 22 I would um, I'd jump at the yeah. chance yeah. tell us a little bit about that then so you finished your career went into just got here, a sales and fitness manager at a health club then on to retail with the Fusion Clothing how was life after football for you? I mean originally like a lot of people do um, I got my basic fitness qualifications and, and went into what I knew which was which is obviously uh, fitness which I'd done alongside football I, I actually went over and worked in a health spa it was a posh gym a little bit like wild star boxing <laughs> um, but I went over and worked there and, and I probably went so fell into the sales side of things but um, I had to cover sales because people weren't in, in the club and I was genuinely passionate about the fitness side of things so that seemed to marry well. Mm -hmm. And I realised there's two routes, like you say, with fitness, we'd go down the personal training route, or I realised to, to earn a better income and, and progress that I would, I thought I was better suited going down the management route. Mm -hmm. So I went sales to management in, in that health club. And, and I thoroughly enjoyed, I had five successful years there before I went into like clothing and retail, mm -hmm. um, which probably a lot of our fans will know. I think. 
Warsaw Diffusion's been in the uh, town, the town yeah. uh, for 22 years. Right. Um, and Diffusion had five or six local stores, <coughs> well-established multi-brand stores of designer brands. Um, but they'd um, started two franchise G-Star stores. Mm -hmm. So I, I did know the directors previously, but I got the opportunity to go into a new um, commercial venture for them mm -hmm. with a G-Star opportunity and I took it and it went really well for a number of years. I thoroughly enjoyed it. We, I looked after 13 stores across the country um, and I learnt lots in terms of commercial aspect of, of retail business. Mm -hmm. Very briefly then, because I know we're running out of time. Commercial manager here, primarily, very shortly, very quickly, sorry. Uh, what will your role be on a day to day? I mean, it's twofold. I'm developing commercial opportunities for local and national businesses and also obviously the club. Uh, I think I'm also obviously, one of the reasons I feel that I've been brought back in is to do with match day experience as well. I've obviously got that link between football and the commercial aspect. So I think it's twofold. Um, developing the commercial opportunities, but also that match day experience for the fans and the commercial partners. And uh, that'll be my role, fundamentally. Right. Martin, just to finish, if anyone wants tickets to both the amateur and pro um, events, how can they get hold of them? Um, they can get through the the Walsh Club. Yeah, the, um, the football club ticket office. Yeah, or myself. Fantastic. Walsh Star Boxing Gym. Super. Martin, Wayne, thanks ever so much for coming on. That's all we've got time for here on Sadler's TV. Join the debate using <coughs> hashtag Sadler's TV. Bye-bye for now.